Hello, I'm Blake Moore with A Action Realty Inspection Services. Today we're out here at Cedar Creek Lake. I wanted to bring you some cool finds uh, on a new build construction. And so you want to get your new builds um, inspected by a third party inspection. They're going up so fast, it's very easy for the builder to walk in and just miss uh, some, some commonly found items. And so that's what we're going to go over today. Right now we're looking at a phase two inspection pre sheetrock. So when we're looking at the outside of the home, we want to make sure that it's watertight. You got a vapor barrier here. You want to make sure it's, it's fastened correctly. And then also any penetrations coming out of the wall, you want to make sure you have proper flashing around here. Zip tape preferably so water can't get in that penetration there. You also want to take a good look at your windows. Make sure that you've got zip flashing all around your windows. Make sure it's overlapping the horizontal joint so you can follow the path of water down. As you can see, this window looks good. And as we continue on, we're looking at the exterior wall and you can notice up here, they're actually missing uh, some zip tape. So we want to recommend that they add some zip tape in that area there. And as we're going along to the wall here, we want to pay attention to the bond breaker here at the bottom. Make sure that the bond breaker is properly installed. You want it behind the vapor barrier so that when water travels down, it actually travels over the bond breaker through the weep holes. And you want to make sure that it's that the corners are not uncovered because the brick veneer will actually bond to the slab and that's how you get corner pops. So you want to make sure it's properly fastened and installed correctly. So as we're making our rounds around the exterior of the home, we want to make sure that the house is completely waterproof and that includes the flashing details. So if you look up in this corner, you'll notice that the wall line protrudes past the roof line. And anytime you have that happen, you want what's called kick out flashing. Kick out flashing is actually installed in the corner there and it kicks the water away from the wall so that it doesn't create a funneling effect down your wall cavity and it prevents water intrusion on the interior wall. So now we're going to make our way in the inside and one of the things we want to focus on is how the bottom plate is fastened to the slab. Uh, you want to make sure that there's a bolt within 12 inches of the ends of the plates and space every six feet. As you can see here, this bolt is properly installed. It has a nut and a washer fastening to the slab. But as we move over to this area over here, remember it's within six feet, you'll notice here that we actually have a missing bolt there. So we want to call that out. And so as we're looking for that, we're actually looking at the plumbing as well. And if you'll look up there, they do have a striker plate in place. However, the striker plate should should hang down two inches below the top plate and that is to prevent anyone driving any type of fastener and penetrating the plumbing line which you don't want. And as we make our way over here to the panel box we notice that the wiring and everything in the panel box looks great however when you look up into the wall cavity these wires shouldn't be bunched up like this however they should be separated and that would prevent them from overheating over time. Also you want to protect where it's bored out in the top plate, you want to actually add a striker plate to that as well, again, to prevent any type of fasteners from driving into the electrical wiring. So as we're inspecting the framing, we want to look up at the rafters here. You want to make sure that you have uh, joist hangers on every ceiling joist, and you want to make sure that there's fasteners in every single hole of the ceiling joist, and you see here that they've got some fasteners missing. Also, right here, you see that there is a joist hanger that's actually missing. So we want to call that out and uh, make sure that they install a joist hanger here and put a fastener in every hole in the joist hangers. Okay, so we're going to move on to the plumbing. We're in the master bathroom right now. And again, with the plumbing, you want to make sure that you have proper striker plates, the bottom plate and the top plate, two inches above the plate to protect any fasteners from going into your plumbing. Also, while we're here, we're looking at the studs and the bore size here. So this is a non-bearing uh, uh, wall, so you're able to bore out up to 60% of this stud. And you'll see here that you actually got more than 60% uh, bored out. So what we want to do is make sure we double up this stud to properly support the, the load here. Also, while we're here, we're going to look at these water lines. And you notice that up here, they're actually fastened to the stud. That's what you want to see. If you did not have those fasteners in place, you would get what's called water knocking. And these lines would literally knock inside your wall and drive you crazy. So while I'm up here in the attic, you want to make sure that the duct is properly stretched out and also supported. If these ducts could talk right now, they would say, please stretch me out and support me. Because what you're seeing here is a restricted airflow and that's going to make for an uncomfortable living environment. 
Okay, so here we are in another bathroom, and one thing we want to pay attention to is actually the bath trap here. So when they cut out the concrete and put the bath trap in, uh, here you see they just filled it back in with dirt. However, you want to make sure that that cavity is filled in with concrete because you don't want any wood destroying insects coming up through the dirt. Up here, again, you want to make sure your water lines are correctly strapped to the stud to prevent any type of water knocking. And as you move over here, you see they got this crazy route going on and it's coming around the pipe here and it's sticking out past the face of this stud. And so when they go to install the sheetrock here, it's going to cause a deflection in a bow here. It's not going to be real pretty for the wife. So now that we're up here in the attic, we want to make sure we look at the mechanical equipment here. And as you can tell, it is installed on a pan. And when you install it on a, a pan, they actually make certain curbs that bring the unit above the flood rim so that it's not even with the flood rim. You don't want that to happen in case water fills this up, gets in the unit. So right now they have two by fours stacked on top of each other and it's not the proper height. And over time, these two by fours will deteriorate and cause the unit to be at a level. And again, we mentioned duct work. I just wanted to point this out to you again. You need proper airflow, proper stretching and supporting of your air ducts to make the house comfortable to live in. Okay, now that we've taken you through the property, uh, hopefully you can see by now why it's important to get a new construction uh, inspected from phase one, phase two to the final inspection. Uh, we've pointed out several things in this home that are common finds in every new build that we walk into. And so this information is valuable to get into your hands. And so if you like this video, please like it, share it with your friends and your family, those that you care about, because this can save you money in the long run. And if this video was helpful for you and you need help on your next uh, purchase of a new home, call on A-Action Realty Inspections and we'll come out and we'll make sure that your house is built right.